All right, I'm hoping you're coming down home and stretch while I uh, staple this necklace to this piece of dirt. Boston, or is he in other places today, or is this the only one? Oh, I'm honored to be in the last one. Yeah, honor is the best of all. So, are you in other places? Are you all of them? Yes, I think all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say no. 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 <laughs> was, it, was it you? She said no. Well, 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 you've had this press for two months. Who's a guy? Kevin Hughes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious. All right, you're getting done? Some of you are done. You're all set? Seven to the movie? I'm sure you can. All right, don't let me rush you. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's not, no need to panic yet. Yeah, normally Quinn doesn't take quite this long. I try to get this in order to come more. But Lisa, Lisa and Lisa. It's just like the worst bag of cards. For me? But I was annoying. Okay, go. Here, you go. Mm. Where are you guys from? Or Niagara? Illinois? Niagara's in Urbana, Ohio, isn't it? Virginia. Thank you. 
Then knowing the value, you can't be so bitter about it because my brother says, oh, it's Garrett. No, I, I didn't. Just going to say again. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the reteach. It's not that like, yeah. I, like I understand what yeah. you're doing. It's just I don't feel confident in any of my answers. Mm -hmm. I don't feel confident like, either. I know what you're doing. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And when I get something that kind of looks like a good number, I what? I'm definitely okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I left the three for five minutes. You turn it just a one. Okay. Oh, you. I'm like, I'm going to let you get two. Oh, I'm going to get three. Oh, I'm going to get three. That looks pretty nice. That does look nice. Hey, do I get the first one? I want to get the one look fun? Because I didn't, I didn't do I could have simplified it, but I didn't want to. Yes, you got it right. I got it right? No, I was talking to her. Oh. She's the one that asked me the question. Okay, I think I've got them all now. Is that right? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, so I, I um, just so that you guys know, I do record all of my classes. Uh, so that's what this is. And uh, anyway, um, it's, it's only recording the screen and, and whatever this can pick up. Hello. Uh, and this is, this is, yeah, for the one person, maybe, Colton, maybe, will watch it this weekend. Probably not. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Get that. But anyway, um, yeah, you want to see what the answers are? Let's go ahead and uh, let's get this first one. So, yeah, the first one was, I, 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 thought, I thought the values that I picked were good. I mean... X equals one and a half. F of one and a half is just one. It's just sine of pi over two. Come on. Oh, if you had a decimal there, you probably have your calculator in rate or oh, degrees. Thanks. Instead of come on, calculus is always done in radians. Yeah, but wait, did you have to get the calculator in there? I did, but I forgot. Whenever I was in Gen Chem, I changed it to degrees. Yeah, because all of you science people, you do degrees and. Calculus is done in radians. Should I get 75% credit? Oh, for sure. If you did it right in degrees. Okay, we'll see. Um, and then the derivative, you got your derivative, and then f of one half for the derivative is just zero, so that's it. I mean, it's this plus zero times x minus whatever it is, one half. Okay, so that wasn't bad. That was number one. Number two, uh, here's my g. There's my derivative. Chain rule. So I did have a slight regret when I started doing this that I'd given you a chain rule here because that is definitely more difficult than what you have in your homework. But nonetheless, you can do the chain rule. That should be the derivative. And then I plugged in my uh, numbers. G of 2 is just 3. Is that not a nice number? Okay, we'll get to part B in a minute. And g prime of 2, that's a nice number, too. It's just 2. So you can plug th 2 in there, and you get 2. Maybe you didn't. Okay, well, anyway. So there's my numbers. My linearization looks like this. It's it's really, oh, look at this. We got a couple A's back here. So, so anyway, yeah, not bad, right? And then now all we have to do now is we want to use the linearization to compute or to approximate g of 2.1. And so 2.1 happens to be, uh, you plug that in here, and you get this. Um, so yeah, you just plug in the, what's wrong with the number 2.1? I just thought we were supposed to do it like we did on the homework. For what did you do on the homework? You did it wrong on the homework then. No, we just plugged the function back into the original equation. Yes, but we had to subtract it from the original equation. Oh, 100%? A plus? OK. Excellent. I, I think I saw that. I see the 3.2. Okay. Well, yeah, well, you know that I can't see very well without my glasses, so. <laughs> it's really pitiful. I used to make fun of people like this. So this is just a cautionary tale. <clears throat> when I was your age, I was like, <laughs> my eyes, I can read one point font. And my dad was doing this sort of thing. It's like, <laughs> I can do better than you. Not anymore. <clears throat> if you live long enough, you do get all. So that's a, a trade-off. You know, it would be tragic if you died early. But <clears throat> Okay, so what's next? Hyperbole. 
You know what hyperbole is? Okay, actually, I just put that up there because I thought it would be funny. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to be learning about are hyperbolic functions. So hyperbolic functions. I have PowerPoint. I'll pull it up, maybe. Maybe. I know. <laughs> You're like, why don't you do your PowerPoint? I've got it, but it has pretty pictures, so I will I will pull it up in a minute. Pretty, uh, pretty pictures. Well, pretty but for a mathematician. So hyperbolic functions, you know the drill. Whenever we learn a new function, what do we have to do? We have to figure out the derivative. How do you find the derivative of a new function that you've never seen before? Uh, you don't even want to say it, but you know, right? Let me write the function down. Y is equal to SINH of X. That is the hyperbolic sine of X. And the other one is this, Y equals hyperbolic cosine. Oh, you know what I just realized? I didn't do the anticipatory set. So uh, let me just put this, show, point you to this thing right up here. You see that necklace? It's been sitting in this classroom for the past six months, literally, because I teach in this classroom. And it's been in here, so I thought I can staple it to the board and no one's going to hear it. So you have this necklace hanging. This is a problem that mathematicians worked on for, I don't know, a couple hundred years before they solved it. Uh, and uh, the various famous mathematicians got this problem wrong. So Newton, Isaac Newton, got this problem wrong. This is one of the problems that he didn't get right. But here's the problem. You have a chain, uh, a chain or a, um, a rope hanging from two points. OK, good enough. What is that shape? What would you say that shape is? What does it look like? <laughs> it's a parabola, right? No, it's not. Isaac Newton thought it was a parabola. So it is it not a parabola. Not a <laughs> parabola. It's only staple to this. Uh, is it like So not a parabola. Uh, so what is this thing? This thing is called uh, um, catenary is the name for it. So now we need to get the PowerPoint because you want to see some other catenaries, don't you? So give me a sec here. Pull this up. Okay, back. Harmonic oscillators. You don't want to do that. So give me where it is. And that's a real one. No, that's not it either. I just I saw the the picture. Just a minute. There they are. Hyperbolic functions. Yeah, come on. Okay, so uh, so here's here's what you're looking at up there. Is the um, the red curve is a parabola. The green curve. Wait, no, I got that wrong. I'm sorry. The green curve is a parabola. The red curve is what you're seeing up there. And you'll see that the parabola and the actual curve are just slightly different. They're so, the difference is so small. Who would even care? Well, of course, a mathematician cares. Uh, and um, like I said, a bunch of mathematicians got this wrong. It wasn't until I think Gauss uh, that we figured out that these are not parabolae. Here's another example. If you hung the chain a little bit further, like, or the two pieces closer together, you get this sort of thing. Uh, so this green thing would be the parabola that you would think it would make, but it doesn't. It actually, you can see there's a bigger difference now between the actual hanging chain and the actual parabola. So these things are called hyperbolic functions. Specifically, they are catenaries. Uh, and here's some pretty pictures of catenaries. Uh, so this is just what happens when a uniform flexible cable or chain is hung between two points. I know, that's not very pretty. Okay, so this is a little prettier. Uh, oh, yeah, this is cool. So this is a time lapse of the St. Louis Arch being built. And something interesting about the St. Louis Arch is that it is a catenary. So if you have a self-supporting arch, it makes a catenary. However, before they took that, that piece out, the, the piece that is holding the thing together up at the top, it was actually a parabola. So, so this thing was a parabola, and then when they pulled out that brace, it settled into the, the shape of a catenary. So there's a catenary for you. Uh, here's another view of the St. Louis Arch. And then here's some 
cables that are heavy laden with ice and those make catenaries as well. So anytime you see uh, cables or wires hanging, those are catenaries. What is a catenary? It is this function right here that I have back here, this hyperbolic cosine. That is a catenary. That's the formula. Okay, so what do we do? Oh, I remember what we do. To find the derivative, we're going to use the limit. <laughs> no, you just didn't want to say it, right? So uh, you do the limit as uh, h approaches 0. We'll use this version of hyperbolic cosine, whoops, hyperbolic cosine of x plus h minus hyperbolic cosine. Ugh, see, I don't even want to do it, so I'm not even writing it properly. There it is. Fortunately for us, though, we don't have to do this because the hyperbolic cosine is actually, uh, it's actually the sum of two functions that you already are familiar with. I know, I just tricked you into thinking this. But normally, normally what we've done when we had a new function that we weren't familiar with is we did this. So I just wanted to throw it out there to remind you that it existed. Uh, but for us, though, fortunately, we have this little relationship that the hyperbolic cosine happens to be the average of e to the x and e to the negative x. That's the hyperbolic cosine. Is that interesting? So, so that, that curve, the curve that that chain made was basically this, possibly times some constant. And there might have been some constant in here, but you can deal with those constants if you need to. So you got a hyperbolic cosine. Um, so let's do the derivative of this. Now that you know, uh, so we'll call this f of x. f prime of x is going to equal this thing over here. So you can do this. You know, uh, here, maybe it would help if I did this. Just a sec. There. So give me a sec here. And I, I always like, for those who are new here, I don't have your names in my phone, but the rest of the students love it that I put their names in my phone so that I can randomly select people because everyone wants to volunteer and show off, but not everyone can volunteer at any given moment. And so I have to just have the phone pick for me. And Jarrett gets chosen. Jarrett, do you know the derivative of 1 half e to the x? I hope you do. Yes, it is one half e to the x. Okay, so uh, I know what you're thinking. That was too easy. So let's make it a little bit harder. Uh, find the next volunteer. Matt, do you know the derivative for one half e to the negative x? Let's say swing at it. Yeah. Like one half e to the negative x. Almost correct. All right, uh, you need one more thing. Natural rule? No, no, no natural rule. Chain rule. That's negative instead of being positive. So multiply by the derivative of this. Would be negative. Get out of your way. What's the derivative of negative x? Oh, negative one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I know it's so easy. That's the problem. It's so easy that he he just didn't want to. Okay, so this is going to equal uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Well, interesting. We actually have a name for this. You see, the reason why mathematicians have started naming these functions, the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, is because, well, there's two reasons. One is that these functions pop up in certain applications, uh, and so... We need names for them. And it's easier to write hyperbolic cosine than it is to write this. Same thing is true for this one. That one is the hyperbolic sine. So that's e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. And so the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine, conveniently, is the hyperbolic sine. Actually, that's not all that convenient, is it? But what's wrong with this? Oh, come on, you can turn this into things you can use. No, what, okay, here, I'll show you what's wrong with it. It's too early for you to make these connections on your own. Let's do this. Uh, uh, cosine, sorry. What's the derivative of cosine? 
Yes, it's negative sign. And you've had that drilled into your heads for the past two months, right? Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of sine is positive cosine. What? Derivative of hyperbolic cosine is the positive hyperbolic sine. Maybe. Let's find out what the derivative of hyperbolic sine is. So let's call this one g of x is equal to hyperbolic sine. So g prime of x is equal to what? So we'll do the same thing. I have 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the negative x. So Gavin, what's the derivative of 1 half e to the x? Oh, yes, that's easy enough. And then the other one, this one's a hard one. And he's not even here to help. But Sam is. Sam, what's the derivative of negative 1 half e to the negative x? 1 half e to the negative x times negative x. And then you have the other neg. Okay, I'll do it the way you said it. e to the negative x times negative 1. And so that equals e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Hmm. That was up here, wasn't it? Oh, it's right there. So that's actually the hyperbolic cosine. Isn't that weird? That there is no negative when you're talking about hyperbolics. Okay, so one reason why we have a name for these is because they come up in, in, our, uh, um, in, in various applications. The other reason is that they actually are related to a hyperbola. You know what a hyperbola is? It's a conic section. You know what a conic section is? Okay, maybe. They're super cool. I got a bunch in my office. I should have brought them with me. Uh, you'd slice a cone if you have an ice cream cone and you cut it, you get a conic section. So if you cut it like this, so imagine I've got my giant ice cream cone here. Cut it like this, I get a circle, right? You can imagine this. If I cut it at a diagonal, it'll be an ellipse. If I cut it kind of perpendicular, you get a hyperbola. You have to cut it really carefully to get a parabola, but uh, but we, we have hyperboli that uh, that we use. So um, so let me remind you what the circular functions are, and then I'll explain why we call these hyperbolic functions. So the circular functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, are defined like this. Uh, oh, why did that? Okay, let's try again. Okay, there's what I'm doing. So they're defined like this. You have a circle. You remember your unit circle? Mm -hmm. Some of you remember it. Some of you never learned it. It's OK. Uh, well, it's not OK. It's sort of OK. Uh, because of the way the state of Ohio does their, uh, <laughs> their course requirements, not everyone gets trigonometry for some reason. But anyway, here's how this is. This is a unit circle, which means that it goes through the points 1, 0, and 0, 1. It's got a radius of one. So here's the definition of a circular function. If you want to know the sine of x, the sine of x is uh, the, the court, oh yeah, cosine as well, cosine of x and sine of x. What you do is you measure along the outside x units. I know you're thinking I should make an angle. Well, yeah, the angle will be the same, but technically it's this distance that we care about. How far are you going along the outside? It's x units. And then the coordinates of that point are the cosine and sine of x. So that's literally what that means. Uh, oh, and this is in radians. If you want to do degrees, you're going to have to do this. So that's hopefully you've seen this at some point in your past, maybe. Maybe this is the first time, but that's what circular functions are. Hyperbolic functions, what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing, only you're going to replace the circle with a hyperbola. Okay, I'll show you a hyperbola. Let's see, where is it? Come on. There it is. So here's the hyperbola. Oh, go back one. This is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. And to get the hyperbola I'm going to use, I'm going to change the plus to a minus. There's the minus. Oh, by the way, this is me being a mathematician. So you don't have to memorize any of this. So I'll, I'll tell you when to pay attention again. 
Uh, so here's this. Uh, so here's this picture that uh, sort of relates the hyperbolic function. So this this blue thing is the hyperbola. It also has a branch back here, but don't worry about that piece. Uh, and you can kind of see as you move around, the coordinates of this red circle are the sine and cosine of whatever angle we're interested in. And the coordinates, whoops, it's gone off the screen now. The blue point that's on the hyperbola, there it goes. Those coordinates are the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. Now, as a bonus, you have the tangent. This tangent to this circle, that tangent line, the coordinates, whoops, it goes really quickly. The coordinates of the point that this line, the red point, that is the actual tangent of the angle that we're talking about. So geometrically, there's some really beautiful things here. That blue point is the hyperbolic tangent. Doesn't do much, it's kind of boring. So the actual tangent, really exciting. The hyperbolic tangent, not so much. Okay, so where are we going with this? Okay, we've already got this. So um, here are the, uh, the ones that you care about. So here you want to pay attention again. If you've uh, if you zoned out, if you were watching your March, did they play this early in the morning? No, the, these March Madness people. Okay, it's probably too early for them to play. So I always I, I remember my uh, afternoon classes like when I had statistics in here. It was afternoon, and I'd walk around, and some people would be like putting their phone away. They were watching the whatever basketball game was on. You know, the calculus is much more important. But anyway, getting back to this, that's the hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine. So you're familiar with these? And we're going to define hyperbolic tangent to just be the ratio, just like you do in trigonometry. So far, so good? Good. Okay, so the hyperbolic functions are not periodic like the trigonometric functions. So it's their circular functions. So these don't go up and down like this. You just get one cycle. That's hyperbolic cosine. It just goes down and then back up. Hyperbolic sine goes something like this. It looks like one branch of the tangent, but it goes on forever and ever, both directions. Okay, so there's that. Let's do some examples. Uh, some of your calculators may have hyperbolic sine on them. Let me see if this one does. Uh, let's clear this out in a sec. Seriously, I did not bring glasses. This will be fun. Apparently not. That's all right. Uh, because of the way the eye works, when you have a bright light, it actually shrinks the pupil, which creates like a pinhole camera type situation. And that's why old people like bright lights. Oh, it does? This have, one does work. That one does. Where is it? In the catalog? Uh, yeah, catalog and then click S. That's what I was going to do. Yeah, so catalog. So if you have a fancy TI calculator, you can just press catalog wherever that is. Bottom. Bottom. Oh, I see it now. Okay, and then press S, which is above natural log. There it is. And then just go down until we find sine, sine hook. There, there it is, sine hook. Now, if you're not as fortunate as Jarrett or me, and you have some non -so, not so fancy calculator, you can still compute the hyperbolic sine, and that would be e to the second minus e to the ne uh, negative second over two. And actually, that's so much more beautiful than whatever Jarrett got. What did you get? Three point six what is that number? I don't even know what it means. But this, I love that. Uh, how about, oh, darn it. If I press the wrong thing up here, it sometimes does that. Okay. So what about this one? The hyperbolic cosine of natural log of two. Uh, actually, Jarrett and I are going are to get exactly the same answer. Uh, but I'll do it this way. Natural log of two plus e to the negative natural log of 2 all over 2. And you know that e and natural log are opposites of one another. They're inverse functions. So that's going to just be 2. This one, I'm going to have to use my 
rules of logarithms to do this. This here, I'll do a little stepping stone. This is e to the natural log of 1 half because e to the negative natural log of 2. Negative natural log of 2 is the same as natural log of 2 to the negative 1. And then this becomes 1 half here all over 2. And so that's going to be, what, 5 halves over 2, so 5 fourths. And you probably got 1.25. Oh, you didn't even do it, because I was, uh, but Claire did it. And your calculator is even fancier, or is it the same brand or same model? It's the, it's the, okay. What's yours? LCD? LED. <clears throat> mine has a plasma screen. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even. It's mine's L LED or LCD. Cheap junk. Yeah, I used to I used to carry these around in like a suitcase type thing. I had the whole classroom set, and you notice I just leave them in there now because you can't even sell these for five dollars on eBay, can you? Let's see. Um, okay, hyperbolic tangent. This is going to equal the hyperbolic sine over the hyperbolic cosine. And so this is going to be, um, sorry, e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative negative 1 over 2 all over e to the negative 1 plus e to the negative negative 1 all over 2. So we can clean this up a little bit, but not too much. I'm sure that I could even clean it up further or maybe do a little bit of algebra with this. But as you know, the way WebAssign works is they don't care if you simplify it. And this is fine. I know you guys are like horrified that a math teacher would say, you don't have to simplify. <laughs> but uh there it is. It's not me, it's the computer. So yeah, by the way, your homework this weekend is on WebAssign. Oh, you like that? I hate it. Okay. I don't know. Fake excitement. Yeah, okay, fake excitement. So yeah, I'll be interested at the end of the course for you when you fill out your course surveys and you say how terrible I was. You can also add to it how you feel about paper versus WebAssign. I'd be very interested to hear your opinions. Or if you just want to tell them to me later, you can do that as well. OK, so here we go. Um, so there's inverse, the inverse hyperbolic functions. Those are on your calculators as well. And these are just ugly. You don't have to memorize those for sure. In fact, you don't even really have to memorize. Where are they? Come on. Darn it. There. You don't even have to memorize these. Uh, what you do have to memorize, so those you don't have to, what you do have to memorize are the derivatives. But those, at least, I can uh, illustrate at least one of these, that if you're doing the inverse hyperbolic sign and your calculator doesn't have the fancy feature, you could just plug it in. But if you didn't have the fancy feature where you could plug it in, you could use this function up here. So natural log of negative 3 plus the square root of negative 3 squared plus 1. And you might say, why is it so complicated? Well, it's an inverse function for one. And what you're doing is you're taking that hyperbolic sign and solving it sort of for whatever number that you're looking for. Uh, so that's why it's so complicated. So this ends up being natural log of negative 3 uh, plus square root of 10. And you'll get something weird, similarly weird, in these other two. So I'm not going to do those uh, because that's not as important to me as dealing with derivatives. There are some identities. They look very similar to the circular identities. Once again, not super important to me, so I'm going to skip them. The derivatives are what I do care about. We've already done this, but since it's the PowerPoint, we're just going to pull it through it really quick. Uh, so there's the hyperbolic sine. Derivative is hyperbolic cosine. Uh, we know the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. Derivative of hyperbolic tangent, a little bit of a pain because I had to use the quotient rule. Maybe I should have made you do this, but we only have 10 minutes left. So here's quotient rule, and it turns out that you end up with just the 1 over the hyperbolic cosine. And then um, here are all the derivatives. So the ones that I care about, you might say, what are you going to put on the test? Yes, that's always the question, isn't it? This one, this one, and this one. Those are the three. The other three, 
I don't know. Why bother? But those three, because those three functions seem to pop up in certain applications, so I want to make sure that you at least are familiar with those derivatives. Notice that those derivatives are basically the same as your circular function derivatives. The only difference is right here. No negative. So if you're familiar with the circular functions, derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, here it's positive, derivative of tangent, secant squared. So not bad, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we've, we've had the pictures, we've done the pictures. Oh, we've done this too, we don't wanna do, oh, actually I do, I wanna do these. So the only thing left that's gonna be a pain is dealing with derivatives. And the way that you're gonna to have to deal with the derivatives is because as with e to the x and sine of x, the derivatives are so simple, you're going to have to deal with things like this, where you're using the chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, and so on. So let's do these, and then we'll call it a day. Hopefully we have enough time. First one is pretty straightforward, so we'll do this one together really quick, and then I'll let you try the second one on your own, and we'll check to see if you got it right. But this one, straightforward. Leanne, what's the derivative of hyperbolic cosine? Do you remember that? Yeah, sine hook. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, now we'll, we have a product rule, but like I said, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be okay with this. In fact, Jackson's chomping at the bit to do this quotient rule, or product rule. So Jackson, do you think you can do it without writing anything down? I bet you can. You know the derivative of x, don't you? Okay, let me write it down for you. Times, oh, times. And then do you know the derivative of hyperbolic sine? Yeah, there it is. You did it. See, I knew you could do it. Uh, now, just to show you that you can do the product rule without writing all the f and g down, let me just point out that there's the x, here's the derivative of x, and there's that x. And then I'll highlight the y, or uh, sorry, that's f. This is g. There's g all by itself, and then it's derivative. So you, if you know the form of the product rule, you don't have to write down all the little pieces. So there it is. Oh, this is interesting. Notice the hyperbolic signs cancel one another. Oh, five minutes to go. Cosh x. All right, so there's that one. Put a box around it, be happy. Okay, see if you can do these other two. Oh, no, just do the two here. I'll number them, one, two, three. Do number two, number three is special. I know, they're all special. Some are more special than others. Okay, so for this second one, number two, I'm going to actually write down F and G. This is the chain rule. This one was the product rule, by the way. And by the way, if you're still a little fuzzy on these rules, you can invite them in if you want. No? Is it Calc 2 students? Yeah, well, well, I'll let them in in a minute. Don't worry. <laughs> you can make fun of them. They, they're out in the cold. Uh, but in, what? Well, you know, metaphorical. yeah, metaphorical. Thank you. Okay, so Claire, you're going to help me out with this one. I know you could do this in your head, but let's do this with the F and the G. F here is E to the X. G is the sine, hyperbolic sine of X. So Claire, what is the derivative of F? Okay, and what's the derivative of G? Very nice. So now we just have to put all of this together. We're going to do f prime of g times g prime. And that's going to be, uh, so f prime is e to the uh, sine times hyperbolic cosine. Very nice. I don't know what I was thinking with number three, and I don't even want to do it, but I do want to mention it. I don't think that you have any like this on your, uh, your homework. 
but does anyone want to actually really volunteer to tell me what you would do? You don't have to do it. Oh, you want to, oh, you guys, wait, Gavin, you haven't answered in a bit. Logarithmic differentiation, exactly. So that's going to be logarithmic, logarithmic. Okay, so I, I looked back here and I realized I have streams on the list. And uh, we've already talked about the homework a little bit. It's on WebAssign. Um, but uh, streams, I actually figured out how I can have two, uh, two different YouTube channels. So I know some of you were complaining that, it, wait, was it in this class or a different class? That I should just make all of my videos public? I think you said that yesterday. Okay. It was, it, it was another class. There's another class, not you. You're too kind. But there's another class that's been complaining. They say, you just make all your videos public, then you don't have to go through all of this rigmarole. I'm like, no, I don't want to make them all public because I've got my personal channel. Well, I can have a second channel. And so starting next week, I'll just have all of my stuff on the second channel. I'll put a link to it on YouTube. You can subscribe and uh, like my videos. Maybe I can even monetize them. That would be super exciting. If I get enough subscribers, then I could start monetizing. All right, so that's it. You're going to be okay. We'll see you on Monday. And uh, maybe we'll see you in the fall. All of you. That'd be great. So uh, Boston's interested in math. No, you can go. You can go. I'm just going to talk on the way out. You're interested in math, seriously? Yeah. And you just went to what is it? Non math. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you meeting with anyone other than Dr. Wiley here? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Well, there are plenty of things. Oh, it's underneath. You can make more of an advertisement if you're in this Okay, so you already know what you need to do. Maybe you could tell Dr. Wiley that I asked I asked you to give it to him to bring. <laughs> he'll, he'll appreciate that. Are you just oh, going yeah. right across the way here? Uh, 130, yeah, 136, yeah. Awesome. All right, well, enjoy your Maybe meeting. Yeah. Evan, I saw your ma you made an appointment for today. Yeah, no, no. It's yeah, it's it's because what yeah, actually what you could even do now, but I'll, we'll do it. Is you can actually put class. You can make your own schedule, and then on Monday I'll just click register. Yeah, I've been a whole like. All right, so you've already done that. But I don't know what the department does with my minor. Uh, what is your minor? Business. Okay, yeah, it's in the catalog. Yeah, it's not on the web page. It's somewhere else. Yeah, we can do that. Not a problem. Basically, just any basic business class, like accounting. I think marketing. I don't know. But yeah, you can, economics. Yeah, we'll, you just fill in whatever you feel like from business, and it'll be okay. So, did you get yourself scheduled? Why not? Wait, 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 wait. Are you a junior? I will be a senior this fall. So when you talk about your senior capstone. I'm not talking about, when you think about the next few years. So now I'm just stressing you off my senior year. That's so far in the future. Well, I'm graduating from two years, I'm 24. Oh, so you do need to plan it out. That's, yeah. that's a good point. However, we are accommodating in the mathematics department. So. Yes, and and we do it at a time that generally, mm -hmm. like if we, 
Like I had it, I had to change the time I was going to do it in the fall because of some student who said they couldn't take it. So there's so few people that are in that class that we do it whenever we need to. So it'll be okay. Don't stress. That you should stress about. So I appreciate that stressfulness. Can you put them both on the same day? Like we do one in the morning, one in the afternoon? So you can't do that? Well, don't lose too much sleep over it. I would. Things will get ugly. Very good. Very good. Well, it'll be okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. How many credits will you have that first semester, senior year? Only 15. Well, only 15, but two field experiences. Yes. Because we were trying to take them last year. Another class last semester, though, it's like, two field experiences, conversion. Yeah. I was stressing myself actually last night about my schedule. And I actually did lose sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh no. Is my schedule going to be too hard in the fall? Isn't that weird? So, <sighs> not at all. It's because of uh, elementary, or no, advanced discrete math. So, I was stressing. Ah, I see. Yeah. Uh, I sent an email to all the middle childhood majors advertising, so I could send that to you too to see if you want, because it's it's 4,000 level, but it's not really. That's the only number here. I'll just put the email up on the screen, and you can read it yourself. Just a sec. Where is it? Go, go, go. There we go. Can you can I read this or I need to make this bigger? There we are. Yeah. So course number is 4099. Doesn't that mean it'll be really hard? Not at all. That's the only number I could use. In reality, you should you just need to be able to reason mathematically, enjoy learning mathematical card tricks to do well. Uh, when will I ever use this stuff when teaching? Are you going to be a teacher? So I thought. Teaching about basic number properties, basic algebra, or just to spice up your classes. You could throw in a math magic trick to, to wow your students. Is it just one credit? Yes, it is. Just that one day a week plus one to two hours of work outside. And then can you use math magic to impress your special friend? Absolutely. Anyway, if that's not enough of an advertisement, I don't know what is. So... Uh, Yeah, I understand. But I do have former students who do use math magic in their teaching currently. Like this one guy, 10 years ago he graduated. He still does math magic tricks to impress his students. Is this class for about like solving like for complex harder problems? Math magic? Yeah. Or is it no. more about this? No, I'm doing it for him. He wanted to have fun, and so it's like, okay, I'll do it. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Wait, are you a middle childhood major? No. I'm an engineering major. Oh, you just happened to see the advertisement. Yeah. Oh, seats are filling up fast. Well, theoretically. Ah, uh, no, no. It's, um, well... I mean, I will hint at some problems, but no, it's more about how math and magic intersect. Because when you see a magician doing tricks, it's one of three things. Either they're using psychology, or they're using sleight of hand, or they're using mathematics. One of those three. So we just look at the mathematics. And I've used this stuff with elementary school students. I did presentations to various elementary schools at one point in my career. Not anymore. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm lazy.
Sorry, I'm trying to drum up business. So, yeah, do you got your seat yet? Yeah, I don't think I'm like registered in the courts yet. You better get there. Well, I just sent an advertisement to a whole bunch of people, personally inviting them. I don't know if I can actually register myself yet. Ah, you have to have, who's your advisor, Dr. Wilson? Yeah, I got to have her click register. How many credits have you earned? Earned or do I have the next? Earned. No, no, it's earned currently, as of the end of last semester. That's what dictates when you can register. Oh, that's right. Well, I already put a little red pop in it that says I can't until March 20th. Ooh, that's late. Hopefully you'll get it. Oh, that's that's next Monday. Oh, you're fine. All right. Uh, what am I doing in here? Probability. Okay, we can do that. Okay, Briar, where'd you get that little tiny cup of coffee? If I wander over there, I could get a little tiny cup. That's so, it's so little. That's what I think is so funny. Is it like most people are? I mean, look at that vessel right there. It's humongous. So you walk in here with this little tiny, it's like you came from Europe or something. <laughs> well, I felt bad. I didn't want to take away from lunch because I was to show up there in five minutes. I, I would have had no problem doing that. I gotta find this. All right, we're getting started, even though it looks like we've lost some. What happened? It's like a little bomb went off in that corner. Uh, so let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wow. All right. Marissa, where is she? You didn't call her up this morning? Okay. Well, anyway, no, you don't have to call her. Never mind. Okay, so I did, uh, since I lost my other book, I found a little another book that, uh, that actually I used previously. So like four years ago, I've got some prayer concerns from four years ago. We have uh, in Calculus 2, uh, we have Joshua's grandfather um, and Brittany. Brittany has several things. Brittany's aunt, Brittany, just Brittany. I don't know why. And then John's dad had surgery. I don't know what Trent B-O-L means. What would B-O-L mean? Doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, I've got a, made a new page for this class, and I've got Sydney's mom on there. 
But, uh, but remind me if there's anything that we've been praying for or that we need to pray for so that I can add it to my new book since I lost my old book. So uh, might as well pray for our weekend and apparently the breakaway people. We're all here wandering around getting chai. Is it hot? Okay. I don't do cold. No, it's just gross. I don't do cold coffee either. I don't understand that. Iced coffee? Yeah. What? I'll do iced tea. I guess that's the same as cold chai. Well, anyway, it's fantastic, is it? Uh, maybe I should try it. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll go over there and see if they have any left after class. And I'll give it a try if they do. Um, so is there anything else still going on this weekend that we should pray for? I don't know if you've seen all these guys in suits, guys and girls. Is there, we have females as well as males on the board. The board is meeting over in Jeddah, I think it is, uh, today. Uh, and they're deciding the future of our university, uh, I guess, with Dr. Spaulding. Uh, they, uh, they meet every spring. So it's not, they're going to approve my contract for next year. Hopefully, I put a rubber, a rubber stamp on it. <laughs> we'll see if I get a contract next week. But anyway, uh, I we I always like to remember to pray for them because uh, you know we want them to do things that are beneficial and will help bless you as students. So, are there other things we should pray for, though? All right, let me go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, this uh, this week and. Um, that we can kind of ease back into um, our studies. I pray that uh, you would sustain these students throughout this second half of the semester and help them to, to do well the work that they began uh, the past couple of months. I do pray for the, the board as they meet, that you would uh, help them to make decisions that are in keeping with your will and that will be beneficial to our students here uh, and will bless the, the people in this community. I also pray for the breakaway students that you would... Um, Help them as they make decisions or try to figure out uh, um, uh, this, this new phase of their lives as they move towards being college students. Uh, may they find uh, joy in the relationships that they make. Um, and I pray for Sydney's mom, that you comfort her and be with her as she goes to various doctors, uh, guide the doctors as they make decisions about her health. Uh, help us all to, to see your truth in all of our classes. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. Oh, this isn't even updated. That's all right. Um, let's see. I'll just do this. Uh, so uh, what sorts of homework issues do we have, if any? Welcome. You look wet. Was it too easy or too hard or just right? Yeah, okay. Gina, what's going on? Number two. Number two. I guess I should have had this up. I had it up. And I think, you know how it logs out after a certain amount of time? Uh, yeah, it logged out. Hold on a minute. Where is my thing? There. Yeah, need more time? Yes, I need more time. Did it keep me signed in? We're going to find out. Hold on a sec. Oh, it did. It kept me signed in. Very nice. So here it is. Uh, number two, you say. So number one was pretty easy because you're dealing with uh, just a basic integral. So that's kind of like an application that you may have heard of in Calc 1, maybe not, but a basic calculus integral. Uh, and then number two is the one that is similar to what we're doing on the quiz. So that's a good one to choose. So let me jot down the information here. Sorry. Let's try again. Oh, start the... Oh. Actually, 